kids and me. Okay, so today we're graphing exponential function. Tomorrow we are graphing logarithmic function. Okay, we're talking exponential, exponential tomorrow is logarithmic. And we do them very similar to each other, so let's learn how to do exponential tomorrow. It'll be a lot easier. Um, f of x equals a to the x is exponential because the variable x is in the exponent. Exponent is the x. Um, the key points. We get key points by plugging in numbers into x and finding the y value. But we're going to pick really easy ones. We're going to plug in 0, and then we're going to plug in 1. So if we plug in 0 to the exponent, anything to the 0 power is 1. If we plug in 1 in the exponent, we get a to the first power, so a. These functions also have asymptotes. And for the parent function, the asymptote is at y equals 0. So we're going to graph y equals 0. There's our asymptote. We're going to graph 0, 1, and then 1a. This graph is going to exponentially grow larger to the right. And then to the left, it's getting closer and closer and closer to the asymptote. That's what the parent function of an exponential graph looks like. This is also um, what's called growth, exponential growth. What is the opposite of exponential growth? Decay. Decay, exponential decay. Um, exponential decay and growth are used a lot in real life application. Decay, by the way, is exponentially exponentially getting smaller. It still has an asymptote. It's just getting smaller. The y value is getting smaller. When would we need exponential functions in real life? When would we need growth or decay? Sales or business? <coughs> Medicine, so biology, chemistry, um, economics, you talk about population growth being exponential. If all of you had uh, two kids and all of your kids had two kids each, the population is growing exponentially. So exponential growth and decay is used a lot in real life. It would be a good thing to understand. So what we have in this example is we have one parent function, y equals 5 to the x. What would be key points that we could graph for y equals 5 to the x? Plug in 0, what do we get? Plug in 0, we get 1. Plug in 1, what do we get? 5. And then our asymptote would be y equals Zero. It's always y equals zero unless there's a transformation that changes it. So the asymptote is always y equals zero unless we have a transformation that changes it. Now, the next six all have transformation. So we're going to say what the transformation is and write the new ordered pairs um, without graphs for this part. <clears throat> so the transformation for the first one, five to the x plus three, what to the graph if there's a plus 3 after the parent function. It's going to translate up 3 units. And when it translates up 3 units, that, that changes our y, our y uh, key points. So we were going to add 3 to just our y value. So we still have 0, but now we have 4. And then we still have 1, but now we have 8. So those would be our new points that we would connect. Our asymptote originally y equals 0. If we translate it up 3, will our asymptote change? Is up have something to do with y? 
Yeah, so then our new asymptote would be like y equals 3. We just go up 3. <coughs> All right, the next one, f of x equals 5 to the x plus 5. And you can see that x plus 5 is in the exponent. So that 5 is attached to the x. <coughs> it's going to change that x value. What's going to happen? It's going to translate. It says x plus 5. Remember what happens when it's next to the x? It's always... If we were multiplying, it would be a stretch or a shrink. But this says x plus 5. It's just going to translate it left or right. When it's a plus 5, it's going to be left. Right? When it's with the x, when it's with the x, it's going to be opposite. So this one's going to translate 5 to the left. We know it is a translation because it's adding or subtracting. We know it's to the left or right because it's with the x. It's always opposite of what it says. So it says x plus 5 is actually going to take away 5 to the x. So our ordered pairs are going to be negative 5, 0. Nope, just kidding. Negative 5, 1. And negative 4, 5. All right, the next one says, negative 5 to the x, and you really have to think about order of operations here. x, the exponent, is on what? It is on 5, not the negative. It is only on 5, not the negative. So 5 to the x is the parent function. That negative is a transformation. So what does a negative to the whole function do? So we're going to say reflection. In the, you know which one? S axis. When it is a negative in front of the whole function, that means it reflects over the x axis. So here's my x axis. We're going from top to bottom. All right. When I go up and down like this, that affects which variable? The y, the y. So we're going to change our y's by multiplying by negative 1. So I'll have 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 5. So that just reflects. Okay, the next one says 5 to the x minus 2. So that minus 2, does that affect the x or the y? That is the y. It's, all, it's a big number. It's not in the exponent, so it's going to affect the y. So we're going to translate down to. Remember when it affects the y, it's just like whatever sign it is, it's, it's the same. So our new ordered pairs are going to be 0, negative 1, and 1, 3. I forgot to bring this up, but... Um, the asymptotes, I, I talked about it with the first one, but I didn't talk about any other asymptotes. Can we go back to the one I did in red? Um, if, we, if we take this y equals 0 asymptote and we go 5 to the left, it's still the same. If we take the green one and we have a graph up here and then we reflect it down, the asymptote is still the same. We take this purple one and we translate 2 down because the asymptote changed. So this one, the asymptote would be y equals negative 2. Next one, 5 to the x minus 8. Where is that minus 8 located? The x one is right next to the x. So I know it's going to be opposite, and I know it's going to affect the x. What are we doing to the x? Right. So translate 8 to the right. 
So many ordered pairs will be eight, one, nine, five. Just adding eight to the x values. Will my asymptote change if I go eight to the right? Last one, we've got x to the negative x. It's 5 to the negative x, I mean. <laughs> so that negative is next to the x value. So what's it going to affect? It's going to affect the x. This is a reflection in the... Huh? Yep. And we're going to change our x's by multiplying by negative 1. So we still have 0, 1. But now we have negative 1, 5. Mm. All right, we are not going to fill out the logarithmic graphs notes. So the notes for that, we're going to go straight to the first example. We'll do the logs tomorrow. We're going to do six graphs. So the first one is f of x equals 3 to the x. Is there a transformation other than a base and the variable? No. no. So there's no transformation. So then what are my key points? Plug in 0, get out 1. Plug in 1, get out <laughs> Did my asymptote change? So it's still at y equals zero. So go ahead and go ahead and grab it. Zero, one, one, three. Now if you're unsure if you're doing this right, if you're unsure about what your graph should look like, you can plug in more points if you'd like. What point could I plug in for x? What could I plug in equally for x? Two. Two, sure. What would be three squared? Um, so 2, 9 is another point. And it looks like it's going to go to the, off the graph there. So how about I plug in negative 1? What is 3 to the negative 1? One? 1 third. 1 over 3, right? So negative 1 is 1 third. And hopefully after <coughs> plugging in some more points, you can really tell that this is what our graph is going to look like. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote. It's not going to pass through it. Now, these are pretty easy. It's just going to be one branch, so it won't ever pass through it. Those ones that pass through were when we had, like, three separate ones, you know. All right, growth and decay. So is this a growth or a decay? You read left to right. You look at it left to right. Is it going up or down? It's a growth. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger the higher number we go. It's getting bigger. <laughs> the domain, we're going to write in interval notation. So the domain would be all the way to the left and all the way to the right. The domain is what am I allowed to plug in for x? Mm -hmm. Negative infinity to infinity. I'm allowed to plug anything in for x, 3 to anything. I'm allowed to do it. But if I take 3 to any number, will I ever get out a negative number? If I do three to number, three to anything, there's no way I will ever get out of negative. That's why this graph isn't negative at all. So what are my y's? <laughs> Zero. Sometimes it writes without me telling you to. Yes. So is that saying that you could actually like find a point that was like right by zero? Eight? What do you mean crosses through? It goes to like through every point except for zero. Never. It goes all the way up to zero, but it doesn't ever catch zero. Never equals zero. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It doesn't pass through it. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, next one. Transformations. Do we have any transformations? One half to the X? No. And then we find our key points. We do plug in zero, get out one. Then we plug in one, we get out half. Y equals zero is the asymptote. We, pl we plot zero, one, one, one half, and our asymptote. 
If you're not sure about what the graph is doing, let's plug in another point. Do you want to plug in? So if you plug in two, you're going to get a four, right? But if I plug in a negative one, what does the negative exponent do? It flips it, so we get two. Negative one is two. I could plug in negative two if I want. It's going to flip it and square it. Is this a growth or a decay? Decay. This one is decay. Is this too easy for you guys? <laughs> what is our range? Zero to infinity still. Next one. Are there any transformations? What is it? Okay, so there's a translate up to. So if it's up to, that means it's going to affect my y's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my <clears throat> key points before the transformation. I'm just going to write those off to the side. So I'm going to do my key points before the transformation. I'm going to plug in 0. I'm going to get 1. I'm going to plug in 1, and I'm going to get E. Do we know what E is? Let me rephrase that. Have you, have you ever done anything with E in math before? Yeah. That's okay. So E is called the natural number. It is kind of like pi, where it has a decimal approximation, but it's like something that has a bunch of decimals. Can't really write it other than this approximation. It, it is on the calculator. Um, we will not need our calculator today, because all we're going to need is to know that E is approximately 2.718. But you can't even graph 2.718, so just how about approximately 2.7? <coughs> It's always that number. E is used in, um, like, when you, do, when you do interest, and you, like, can compound the interest annually, or you can compound the interest monthly, or you can do it weekly, or you can do it daily. Like, to compound it continuously, that's when you use E. It's something that helps you compound interest continuously. Anyway, uh, why is E going to be important? Do you remember? Anything else about E? Does anybody remember anything else about E it's for the chapter we're on? It's the natural number. What are we doing tomorrow? The law. Remember it? You remember what it's called? Yeah, we'll do the natural log tomorrow too. Yeah, that's all. But that's just the law of the base. It's okay. All right, anyway, back to this. Um, so those are my key points. And then we're going to use our transformation on those key points. So if we're translating uh, translate up to, I'm just going to add 2 to my y values. So my new key points are 0, 3, and 1, what? Approximately 4.7. What is our asymptote? What is the transformation? Right. So the transformation, because it went up, it affects y equals 0. So now y equals 2. Is this a growth or decay? Growth, domain, negative infinity, two cause of infinity. The range. 
Translate left three. So my original key points are zero, one, one, one third. And when I translate left three, I'm subtracting three from the excess. So then my new key points are negative three, one, negative two, one third. My original asymptote is at y equals zero, and then I move that to the left, so it's still y equals zero. So is this going to be a growth or decay? Ooh, we don't know yet. Let me just let me just graph it first. Yeah, this one's definitely a decay, isn't it? It's um, getting closer to zero. The y values are getting closer to zero. That's making it a decay. It's getting closer to zero. Approaching zero. Domain? Negative infinity, positive infinity range? <coughs> zero to infinity. Next one, we've got negative five to the x. Is there a transformation? Reflect in the <laughs> um, it does affect the y value. It affects the y value, but it's a reflect in the x axis. So when I find my key points, I have zero, one, one, five. When I have my key points. I'm going to multiply my y's by negative 1. We already did this one on the first page, right? So I have my new key point 0, negative 1, 1, negative 5. Equation of the asymptote, does it change? I take my y values and I multiply by negative 1. Does my asymptote change? Left to right, is this a growth or a decay? Is it getting closer to zero? Or is it getting further away? It's getting further away. This is a growth. It's growing more and more negative, but it is a growth. Yeah. So like does this flow when they say it's a negative growth? I'm just confused on like how they would like look at that and say it's I don't know what else looks up and see if I can answer your question. Because I because I'm not into this system, you know. <laughs> but like when you think about what's happening to the y values is they are growing. They're just growing this way. Right? The domain would be still negative infinity, positive infinity, but the range is gonna be what? negative infinity to zero. It's the, the negative numbers. It's all the negative numbers. All right, last one. G of x 
equals 3 to the negative x. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at 3 to the x and write those key points down for 3 to the x. 0, 1, 1, 3. And then is there a transformation? What is it? Reflect in the y-axis. That means I'm changing the x value. So I'm multiplying by negative 1. To get 0, 1, negative 1, 3. My equation of the asymptote is y equals 0, so if I multiply the x's, that doesn't change my asymptote. closer to zero. It's approaching zero. It's getting closer to zero as we go from left to right the same way we read. Domain, negative infinity, positive infinity. What's my range? Zero to, zero to positive infinity. Okay, our um, assignment is a worksheet which I'm handing out as soon as I write this up there. On the worksheet, it has today's assignment, uh, today's and tomorrow's assignment. So we're only doing the odd today. Tomorrow will be the even, so if you aren't here tomorrow, you already have it. If you aren't here tomorrow, you'll also already have the notes. They're the rest of them that we didn't finish today. If you aren't going to be here tomorrow and you have an extra second to um, start the notes for tomorrow, I can help you that. Don't want you to get behind your last week of school. Yeah. <laughs>